Welcome back to JW's Backyard. And if you like me, and you like doing sweet willies and sick donuts, then you need to get yourself a 30 series tote converter, like I got here on this sweet ride. And like I got back there on that sweet ride. Now, we're gonna go over a complete guide of how to, well, as a complete of a guide as I can think of, of how to install and modify these 30 series tote converters. And we're gonna go over some common mistakes people make when installing them. So, let's get to it. So this is a 30 series torque converter I got off of Amazon or eBay. I've got multiple torque converters off of each of those, just based on whatever the best price was at the time. And usually you can get these for about 60 bucks. If you're paying more than that for a knockoff 30 series torque converter, you're getting ripped off. Now, a lot of the modifications that you can do to these Amazon eBay torque converters are transferable over to the Comet. All right, so I'm gonna to try to break this down section by section. Now this is referred to as the driver and this side's referred to as the driven pulley. Now let's get the crank bolt off. And this is one of the most common things people mess up on with these engines. Every bolt on this engine is metric except for the crank bolt. This bolt is actually a standard bolt and it's a 5 16th by 24. Now, Usually you need a pretty long bolt uh, to make this work and I often have to get the two inch. Um, sometimes you can get by with different, a different size, but I found that the two inch actually stays in the best. Uh, some of the uh, smaller bolts I've got don't have enough thread engagement and they'll back themselves out pretty often. So let's get the driver off and take a look at it. Now, they usually come with this washer, this pretty nice washer. It has a slot for the key. But if you don't have this washer for whatever reason, you can just use regular washers. So you have your outer cover that just comes off. And there is a sleeve that slides down in between there. And then you have your weights and your garter springs. So one of the big things with the driver is this sleeve. You see it's different on both sides. There's a flat side, and then there's a side with this raised portion. So the flat side goes down, it goes towards the engine. And you see on this sleeve, there are two flat sides. There's two rounded sides here, and then two flat sides here. Those flat sides match up with flat sides on the side cover. So when you install this, you have to make sure that those flat sides match up. Now, you can get it on there without those matching up and just run the bolt in, but you're likely going to have clutch slip if you do that. So that's one thing I see people mess up on quite often. i just got to make sure those flat sides match up. Now, let's get this off, and let's talk about the garter springs. So with the garter springs here, you can change those out, and... They do sell a variety of different springs that engage at different RPMs. Uh, and that's good, say, if you have an engine that makes a lot of power down low but doesn't make it up in the higher RPMs, you can buy different garter springs to, say, engage at a lower RPM if your engine performs best at low RPMs. Or if you want something that engages at higher RPM, you can buy that and install it. Now, I've got a video on how to install these garter springs, and it's pretty easy. You can just kind of roll these off and uh, stretch and roll the new ones back on. And here's an example of how they come. Uh, you know, this is Comet brand, of course. Uh, they have Comet part numbers. But you can see there's a whole variety of different springs. Usually they go by color but there's some that engage at all different kinds of RPMs. And uh, it also depends on what type of weights you have in the driver as well, but uh, you can get these at Go Power Sports, BMI Carts, OMB Warehouse, any of those places. So next we're gonna move on to the belt. And this is a place where most people mess up at. If you notice, there is a flat side to the belt, and then there is a tapered side that's slanted. So the flat side always goes towards the engine. 
And if you notice, there's a flat plate here. The back of the driven pulley is flat. And so of course the flat goes up against the flat. And on the driver and on the driven pulley, the face farthest out is tapered. So of course the tapered side of the belt fits on that. Now this is the part number that fits this torque converter, but I have seen different links being used. Another thing that these torque converters come with is this little sleeve. And this sleeve normally fits right here on this back plate. And it's meant for the belt to ride on to keep the belt from wearing at idle and keep this plate from kind of grabbing the belt. And, you know, it can cause the cart to kind of lurch forward or your, whatever you have this on to lurch forward. But I've had multiple issues with these sleeves where they will get wedged in the driver here. And I've actually got a video on this showing how it gets stuck. But normally as the driver expands, it's supposed to slide over this little bearing and you know, when it contracts, it slides back off of it, no problem. But multiple times I've had the driver get caught and wedged on this bearing and it keeps the, and it, what it does is it keeps the torque converter from disengaging and it keeps a hold of the belt. So in my scenario, I was going wide open on the go-kart, went to slow down and it wouldn't disengage the belt. So it ended up cutting the engine off and locking up the tires and I went spinning out at pretty much top speed. Now a lot of people will say that this needs to be lubricated that's why it keeps sticking but it seems to be more of a clearance issue rather than a lubrication issue. So I usually just throw these away. I don't use those little bushings uh, on here just because of the safety risk. Now you know, you will have a little bit of extra belt wear, but in my opinion, it's not enough to even notice. And you do have the lurch where it'll try to, once it gets warmed up, this metal, the belt will try to grab this metal and the car will lurch for it a little bit, but that's just something I live with. Another mistake people often make is they don't get the backing plate of the driver. They don't get the backing plate for the driver and the backing plate for the driven side lined up. Now, if you see, if I had a belt going from this one to this one, it's in a straight line. They'll often have either one too far in or one too far out, and the belt will be at a slant, and it might run that way, but you're not gonna get very good friction, and you're probably gonna have some slippage. So, if we take this backing plate off, Usually, in most scenarios, you need a spacer and one washer to make this backing plate match this backing plate. Now, most of the torque converters, they come with these. So you don't have to worry about going out and getting them. You should, they should come with your torque converter and that's where they go. Just one spacer, one washer. And as you can see on the driven side, I did have to add a washer to make sure that those backing plates were matched up. Another tip is you can mount this in any orientation you want to. You can mount it backwards like I have it here, you can mount it forwards, you can mount it straight up and down, or you can mount it straight down. As long as you can get the chain on, it'll all work the same. Now, sometimes in certain orientations, these fins will get in the way of the chain and you can just grind those off and I've ground these fins off of multiple torque converters and it's never affected the strength. I've never had one of these backing plates break with the fins ground off. And if you look at the other cart here, I've got that mounted sideways and you can see I had to grind some of those fins off down there because they were getting in the way of the chain, but that converter works perfectly fine. I've got another go-kart where I have it mounted straight up and down. And I did have to roll the edge of the gas tank a little bit to make that one work and grind a little bit of the fin off the head. So another thing to be mindful of is when you're putting in these side cover bolts, you have to be really careful not to over tighten them because I've stripped out multiple 
bolt holes putting these in and you end up having to drill it out and do a thread cert and just save yourself the trouble just use a hand ratchet when putting those in and just get them snug but do not over tighten them because they will strip on you we're going to move on to the driven pulley here uh, one thing to be mindful of is when you're putting this nut on it is a lock nut has a nylon insert you want to make sure you don't over tighten this if you over tighten it what it does is it will put pressure on the bearing on the back side here and it'll cause friction and this pulley will not spin freely it'll have a lot of resistance or it won't move at all so make sure that you snug this nut up to where the nylon is engaged but you don't want it putting a lot of pressure on that pulley there or it will mess that bearing up if you do get it to run the bearing's not going to last long and you're going to be replacing it and they are not easy to replace and i know from experience So we've got the driven pulley here, and the way this one works is as RPM increases, it compresses this spring inside here, and this expands and allows that belt to travel down farther into that pulley, and it changes the gear ratio. Now, with this, you can change out the spring. This is the factory spring that comes in it, but they do sell springs that will allow this to start expanding at different RPMs. So a common modification for these converters is adding a yellow spring and there is the Comet part number. And you can get these on most of the go-kart websites, but this spring is stiffer than the spring that comes in it. And particularly with the yellow spring, what it does is it lets the engine get higher up in RPMs before it starts opening up and changing that gear ratio. So I've just got the factory spring on this cart uh, just because I, I haven't got around to changing it yet. But on the pink go-kart here, you can see I've got a yellow spring. And what it did on this go-kart was allowed me to do wheelies on it. So as long as I'm on the pavement and I have good traction, this cart will do wheelies with that yellow spring in. And before, when I had the red spring, it would not do wheelies. So it allowed this engine to get in a RPM range that had enough power to do wheelies before it started changing gear ratios. Now, you have to be careful in some applications with swapping in a yellow spring because if you have an engine that is a little underpowered, for the weight of your cart, then your engine may not have enough power to spin this fast enough to compress a yellow spring. And I've actually had this issue with one of my bigger carts. I swapped in a yellow spring thinking I was gonna get a little more torque, but what it did was it slowed the, it slowed the cart down significantly because the engine just didn't have enough power to open this up all the way with the yellow spring and I was only getting partial travel out of the belt down the pulley. So just something to be mindful of if you have a heavier cart, yellow spring may not be the best option for you, but if you have something light like these two I've got here, it could make a world of difference. So another thing to talk about are these holes here on the driven pulley. Now, these holes are actually what the spring back here locks into. Most of the time, these torque converters come with the spring inserted into the middle hole, but what these holes determine is how much tension is on that spring and how much pressure it takes for the pulley to open up. So, you can reduce the amount of tension or increase the amount of tension on that spring and let this pulley open up quicker or make it harder for it to open up, which could produce more torque. From the left, this is the least amount of tension. This is the medium setting and this is the highest amount of tension. And the highest amount will give you the most torque. It'll keep 
this in a gear ratio Longer. that is more suited for torque. I have seen people drill holes on each of the sides to allow for a little more adjustability. And I do have separate videos on how to change out that spring and how to change the spring settings here. So the sprocket that the chain connects to connects here on the shaft that the driven pulley rides on. And these kits normally come with two different sprockets, one's for a 30 chain and one for a 40 chain. Now this is the 12 tooth 30 chain sprocket that comes in the kit, but you can get different size sprockets to adjust the gear ratio even more. Now, I have used a 10 tooth sprocket before and this increased my torque significantly, but really cut down on top speed. So it cut down on top speed so much that I just swapped back to the 12 tooth sprocket. And on these sprockets on the shaft here, just a tooth or two make a huge difference. Now, I usually mount my sprockets here on the inside. It's just a good spot to reduce the amount of stress on the bearings, but I have seen people push this shaft through a little farther to the back side and mount the sprocket on that. And I've also seen people mount the sprocket way out here on the end. You know, some spots are more ideal than others, but you do have options if you need it to work for whatever setup you have. 